Okay. Okay. So, uh, disparity of seats, language problems, cultural differences, political issues. They wanted more representation in the constitution and the assemblies. So, all of these were the reasons as to why the East Pakistanis always felt somehow politically suppressed, politically op oppressed. All right. So, Yahya Khan's major political agenda was to lift up the position of the East Pakistanis to order a military action in the East Pakistan and to crush the politi political agitation that was there among the East Pakistanis. It was important, yeah? Can anybody just, just tell me why was it so important for the West Pakistani politicians at this point in time to cater to the needs of East Pakistanis? I mean, um, why were they so focused on this part of Pakistan? That is an open question. Why do you think was this agenda of Yahya Khan so important for the future of Pakistani politics? Nobody? You guys can just make some guesses if you don't know the exact answer. The question, the question is that uh, Yahya Khan's major political agenda was to focus on the East Pakistan and to somehow uh, maybe suppress their voices further or to lift up their position or get a definite solution to the conflict in East Pakistan. So why do you think was this a major problem at this time? And, and why do you think this problem needed an immediate solution at this point in time? Gee, guys. Isha, would you like to add anything? Sir, maybe they wanted to gain their support. Yes, that is a very valid point. By lifting up that part of the population, the leaders could maybe become more popular, gain their support, all right? So this could be one of the reasons. And secondly, because they knew how the conflicts were increasing every day, this, this issue had become such a pressing problem, it was important to get a resolution as soon as possible because you see, all of this caused separation of Bangladesh, uh, creation of Bangladesh, separation of Pakistan. So the leaders, they, they needed to avoid this sort of situation. Yeah. So they had to take every measure possible to avoid spreading up of Pakistan to somehow uh, satisfy the needs. Because when you country, mein jab, just take an example from, from these days, for example, we, we see these protests in Balochistan every day, every other day. So what do you do? You try to somehow lift up that part of the population. Yeah. Aap, you don't leave the problem as it is. So, uh, and, 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 and I, mean, I mean, if you don't look for a solution, result kya hota hai? the results are very negative. So you just try to avoid these conflicts uh, in every possible way. All right. So here we're done with the first question, uh, General Yaya Khan. Okay, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Now, who was Sheikh Mujibur Rahman? He was a member of Muslim League. He later on established his own political party named as the Awami League. And his political agenda was self-government in East Pakistan. He knew that the East Pakistanis needed to establish their own government. Up till now, guys, yeah, you see, the East Pakistanis were dependent on the West Pakistani constitution. So all the constitution attempts that were being taken in the West Pakistan, East Pakistanis were a part of that. They were always requesting for more seats. They were always requesting for more representations. Uh, and obviously, they, they were protesting as well whenever they, they felt suppressed. But Sheikh Mujibur Rahman knew that they, 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 they won't get a, they won't get a, I mean, they won't get an answer to these questions this way. So the only solution to the problems of East Pakistan was a self-government. Self-government is when East Pakistan could independently form their own government within their part of the uh, country. All right. So what he did was he presented a six point plan as his political agenda, as a political motive or on lines that Muj Sheikh Mujib Rahman would be working on. All right. So the elections of 1970 took place and he won the elections with a great majority. Um, but he had to somehow share power with Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. Zulfikar Ali Bhutto was ruling in West Pakistan at that time. And you see, when leaders, they, they're, they're asked to form coalition governments, that is because they, 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 they need to share power. So Sheikh Mujibur Rahman had to share power with Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, and it was important for both of the leaders to agree on the six points that he presented. 
So, um, the six points, we're going to get to those points later. But for now, just know that Sheikh Mujibur Rahman's agenda was also to lift up the East Pakistani politics to somehow um, bring up the leaders to form self-government. He presented this plan. He wanted Zulfikar Ali Bhutto's support to basically practice that plan. And um, the, the, the problem here was that Zulfikar Ali Bhutto did not agree on one of the points of the six-point plan. And that point was a separate army that was being that was that was proposed in uh, as, as part of the six uh, point plan. So let's let's read these points. Number one, the, the plan stated that decision making must be at provincial level. All the provinces must have this autonomy to make their own decisions. There must be separate currencies for East and West Pakistan. They will make their own financial policies. They will have their own foreign policies. All right. Provinces to tax their people and send a share to federal government. All the taxes will be collected at provincial level and that share. And some part of those taxes will be sent to prevent federal government. And the why, I mean, the reason why this point was so important was, let's say, uh, let's talk about Pakistan today. So all the taxes that we pay as citizens of this country are basically delivered to the government of Pakistan, the central government, all right? And, and that is how the taxes, taxes, taxes are collected. So what Sheikh Mujibur Rahman proposed was that taxes must be collected at provincial level. For example, Sindh, Balochistan, Punjab, K, KPK, sub ke apni tax collection hogi. And all of these provinces will send a share of their profits or their taxes, the amount that they collect, some share will be given to the central government. Okay. In our case, the central government is the government of PTI these days, all right. In uh, we were talking about the time of General Yahya Khan and Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. So at that point in time, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman proposed that the taxes must be collected at provincial level and then the central government must be given a share from the total amount collected. All right, then um, East pa each province to set up its own trade agreements with other countries and to control the money made through this trade. So the trade agreements would also be controlled on provincial level and not on federal level. So every province must be allowed to trade with any country they want to. They will not have to depend on the federal policies for that. And last, each province will have its own army, own troops. This is the point that caused the conflict. So Al-Fakar Ali Bhutto did not agree on this point. So guys, I want to ask from you guys over here, what do you think for these six points? Were they actually valid for, for a country like Pakistan, a newly established country? Was it wise to implement the six points? Gee. No, sir. And why is that so? Sir, because uh, Pakistan was it in its uh, early stages and like different currencies, like eventually it would have led to separation anyways. Mm -hmm. All right. So you're saying these points were creating the divide. Yeah. Having um, separate currencies. Yes. Uh, sir, I just wanted to ask that um, given that we had just come out of British rule, mm. wasn't their mistrust valid? mistrust of the uh, of east pakistanis government because in a way east pakistan was doing what the british had done they weren't giving them enough seats like the british had done mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so in a way if these points were guaranteeing them mm -hmm. a chance mm -hmm. of being free which pakistan was based on mm -hmm. weren't they right you're absolutely right. The East Pakistanis felt in the same exact way that most of the Muslims felt before partition. This is the reason why these East Pakistani politicians were campaigning on the same lines, uh, the lines of the Pakistan movement pre-partition. All right. So, I mean, they, they, they wanted independence. They wanted self-government. You see, this is what co Congress wanted initially before partition as well. So, but for West Pakistani politicians, it was difficult for them to agree on these points because they had gained independence and they did not want the history to repeat with Pakistan itself. All right. They wanted this part of Pakistan to stay intact, but obviously they, they were not doing anything practical for that. So you're absolutely right. The, the, the sentiment of the people of East Pakistan, East, uh, East Pakistan, the sentiments of the politicians of East Pakistan were, were very true in regards to how they, they felt oppressed and how they wanted uh, this general independence from uh, the, the other part of West Pakistan. But again, 
when we when we discuss these political matters we discuss these from an issue from a pakistani perspective on on on, on a whole not just east pakistan but we cater to west pakistan west pakistani politics as well and as a country as a newly established country it was important for uh the, the pakistan to have a federal form of government you see this is what jinnah proposed initially jinnah always campaigned for provincial autonomy pre partition but as soon as pakistan was made jinnah changed his perspective from provincial autonomy to a federal form of government why do you think he did that theek hai jinnah ne bhi apna point of view change kiya tha because he knew ki pakistan given the current the, given the situation of that time if let's say we had given so much power to the provinces and to to do these the wings of pakistan conflicts honge aur wahi hua most of these points were agreed upon this is why the next elections sheikh mujibur rahman won with an overwhelming majority all right so you're right but again we cannot ignore the sentiment of the west pakistan as well i hope this makes sense for you hmm? yes sir thank you no problem all right guys uh anything else is everything clear up till now should we move on Yes, so clear. All right, but we did not discuss this point. Uh, the these six points here. What do you guys think? Was it fair to implement these six points at this point, and when where, where, where Pakistan was? G. Reasonings, please. Okay, if I tell you that Zulfikar Ali Bhutto did agree on on the first five points, except for the last one. So obviously he. considered these points to be politically right and um this is the reason why he agreed to these five points but again let's look at these points um from both the point of views let's analyze these points number 1 as as for the east pakistanis perspective is concerned it was a very um a powerful move to have these six points why because it was important for the politics of east pak politicians of east pakistan to uh, recognize the problems that they were facing and all and, and all of these were the problems yeah the, the, the currency the taxation the trade uh, the cultural differences the language barriers and the and, and self government was the only solution to these problems so according to the east pakistani perspective these points were very very valid but according to west pakistani perspective these points were dangerous because you see if we look at the the incidents that were to uh to, i mean that would take place in future the creation of bangladesh these six points were one of the reasons for creation of bangladesh do you i mean you're you're agreeing to a separate army you're agreeing to a separate currency you're agreeing to separate trade agreements you're agreeing to separate collection so phir ek mulk ka kya fayda i mean if you if you i mean if you if you're giving so much power to the provinces then the federal government starts to lose its power theek hai so this is what you need to understand so there's no right or wrong answer for this question you just have to analyze this from both the perspectives all right it's important that you understand it from the east pakistani perspective as well as from the west pakistani perspective all right okay now uh once the points were approved a year after that in 1971 the east pakistani started to uprise against west pakistan and that uprising was supported by india india supported the uprising of east pakistan because of the initial conflicts with india right after partition obviously uh, that is a national sentiment we were we we got separation from india in 1947 and now it was the time to i mean it, 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 there was this potential separation that pakistan was to face in the years to come so india was there to support these pakistanis they opened their borders for them they allowed them to travel to their country and they helped them support and i mean and then they helped them make this force known as the mukti wahini sorry guys ek second okay mukti wahini was a force that was established with the help of india and the east pakistani um uh, east pakistani people were a part of that force um there was this operation searchlight that took place it was conducted by west pakistan just to suppress the or just to face the mukti wahini force they wanted to put down all the rebellions all the uprisings that were taking place in east pakistan you see anyways find some similarities between war of independence and mukti wahini 
all of the events are so similar. This is what initially happened in India pre-partition as well. In 1857, when Muslims and Hindus are pros against the British. And this is exactly what, what Pakistan was facing over here. East Pakistanis were uprising. The West Pakistanis were trying to put those rebellions down by, uh, by, by, by or conducting this Operation Searchlight. A lot of these Pakistanis, um, they, they, they were uh, killed in this operation, and it was a source of violence in, in East Pakistan. So um, you could say that some, somehow this Operation Searchlight backfired because um, the East Pakistanis were more agitated. They were more determined to fight for independence at this point then. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, during the elections of 1970, Awami League won with a great majority, and that majority of Awami League was a problem for West Pakistan. Before we move on to these reasons, why do you think, guys, a majority of uh, Awami League was a problem for West Pakistan in 1970? We've studied all the reasons. What do you guys think now? Uh, because East Pakistanis had control of, like most of most of the army, they were all controlled by East Pakistanis, the main government. So the West Pakistanis were, like they weren't, they didn't have that much control over like the administrative part of the country. Mm -hmm. Give them control of that. Would I mean, mean how how would you analyze this point then? Yes. What effect did it have on um, this concern? of West Pakistanis over um, the majority of Awami League. I mean, why were they so concerned with the majority then? Ji Ahmed? Because then if the, they would have lost power then, if the East Pakistanis would have won the Awami League. Mm -hmm. Okay, absolutely. Awami League was directly contesting against West Pakistan till this point. So a majority or victory of Awami League was a direct threat to West Pakistan, the political parties of West Pakistan. Um, okay, there's another point. Abdurrahman says because it led to creation of Bangladesh. Okay, so you're right. Creation of Bangladesh is a consequence of this overwhelming majority of uh, Awami League. But why? I mean, you're still not answering the question. Why was it a threat to West Pakistan? Yes, the consequence is absolutely right. It did lead to the creation of Bangladesh. But how? What happened in between? Why did that majority cause creation of Bangladesh? That is the question. Let me know if you, think, if you can think of a reason here. Moving on. Uh, so guys, remember, you guys know the reasons, yeah? But it's very, very important to link your reasons to the question. Most of the reasons that I get from you guys are absolutely correct. But the problem is that we, we, we need to understand how to link those reasons. History may you get your marks for the analysis. Yeah, Most of the marks that you get in a seven mark question or in a 14 mark question are for the analysis. And trust me, if you guys don't link your reasons, you might not get a mark for the reason, just for even if the reason is correct. So it is, it is very, very important to link your answers to the question and that linking is basically the analysis that you write. Okay. Just as we were discussing this point of creation of Bangladesh. So creation of Bangladesh is the consequence. The reason here is that Awami League became so popular among East Pakistan, they became so powerful that they were in this position to implement, pass, reject any law in East Pakistan. They were now in this position to govern their own people and they could now finally implement the agenda of the self-government. They could now implement the six, six points, yeah, the six point plan over here. And six point plan, her point me ki baat ho rahi thi. separation, 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 separate currency, separate, uh, army separate policies do you see this is why bangladesh was created because the overwhelming majority of east awami league caused the leaders of awami league to create their own policies it was a chance for them to implement the self-government it was a chance for them to implement the six uh, point plan and eventually all of it led to creation of bangladesh 
All right, is it clear? Abdul Rahman, is it clear to you? Everyone, guys, समझ आ रहे? Let's move on to the reasons now. The, why did the victory of Awami League in the elections of 1970 cause constitutional crisis? Why was it a problem for the West Pakistan? Number one, that Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, um, he he won 160 seats out of 162 in East Pakistan, which was a great majority, and they could form their government without any coalition. They did not. I mean, they remember initially they they, they needed needed the support of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. Over the six-point plan, but now the majority was so overwhelming that they did not even need any support from a West Pakistani politician. They were free to make their own government. All right. So this is a very important point here. Secondly, guys, you see these bold lines are all the analysis. The overwhelming majority of Awami League meant that it could form its government without any coalition. And could make its cabinet. West Pakistan politicians had a fear to be dominated by East Pakistan, so they strived to be on safe side and power sharing led the situation to constitutional crisis. All right, West Pakistanis fear domination of East Pakistan over here. Okay, number two, the six-point plan. Uh, it 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 provided a great amount of autonomy to the provinces and it limited the powers of center. That was a problem over here. Imagine if each province had its own group. So, क्या होता हर वक्त लड़ते ही रहते फिर तो सारे. Awami League was attributed uh, was attributed to these points. So it was standard that East Pakistan would move towards more independence. The situation forced the West Pakistani leadership to prevent Awami League in assuming power. Created the crisis in Pakistan in 1971. This is why the East the the West Pakistanis started these the campaigning against the East Pakistanis. The Operation Searchlight. Why did they do every all of that? Because they knew that if they let East, East, I mean, if they had allowed East Pakistanis to form their own government, they would have gotten the independence. All right. So they, they, they were fearing independence. Actually, the creation of Bangladesh that you were talking about. So there was this fear because uh, the six-point plan was a very dangerous plan. It it guaranteed a great great amount of power to the provinces, and that was a you could say. I hint to independence that these Pakistanis are in wait over here. Last, this point was that uh, another. I mean, this is another reason for the constitutional crisis. That there was supposed to be a session of assembly, which was postponed, and the People's Party did not join the parliamentary session because um, obviously they knew that there was there was no power sharing. Taking place at this point in time, People's Party is the guy. The guy is the political party of West Pakistan here. So, so the, the the major problem was between the Awami League and the People's Party here. All right. So the problem here in East Pakistan was that the the the, the West Pakistani politicians did not attend the assembly session that was being postponed for several um from 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 quite some time, and this is when General Yahya Khan decided that they will launch strict military action to suppress these problems that were taking place. um awami league had banned uh yeah, just a second just give me a second please All right, sorry guys. So we were talking about, yeah. So how Awami League at this point was also banned. Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was sent to jail, um, and obviously all of it was the political, the constitution crisis was not avoidable at this point in time, because both of the parties were taking severe and strict actions against each other. Okay, so there is this fourteen mark question now. Which we're gonna leave it for the next class because it talks about the separation of Bangladesh. Guys, please let me know if everything's clear up till up till now. Is the seven mark question clear to everyone? Let me know if there's any question, any confusion, because I'll be asking you guys to attempt this question now. Okay. All right.
so ek to guys to assignment will be that you will be attempting this question why did the victory of awami league in the elections of 1970 cause constitutional crisis for pakistan this is a seven mark question and the second question that you'll be attempting is a 14 mark question here the six point of mujib but the most important reason for the creation of bangladesh do you agree so uh, i am i'm not displaying the answer right now because i want you guys to attempt it on your own first we've discussed all the reasons to discuss the problems that the east and the west pakistan were facing up till now you guys know the reasons for the conflicts you guys know the political developments that were taking place during the time of yaya khan and uh, sheikh mujibur rahman so i think you guys can write down the reasons for creation of bangladesh seven reasons for creation of bangladesh one evaluation at the end starting with a simplistic statement and analysis at every stage analysis for every point is very important and then you guys need to uh explain in the evaluation that which reason do you think was the most important so because the question states that six points of mujib were the most important reason you guys need to write six points on level 3 all right explain six points in the start on level 3 and then move on to level 4 with six other reasons if you think the six point were, were the most important which i think were the most important you guys must also agree to this if you think so to so definitely write about that in the evaluation with a, with a short summary uh if you guys think any other reason was most important explain that while you evaluate your answer theek hai ji is everything clear guys is the format clear you will be attempting this question as an assignment i'll be posting this on the google classroom right now uh the assignment deadline will be 10 pm tonight so please be sure to submit your assignments because i will have to also send a feedback to all of you individually on this assignment so it's important that you guys send your homework on time for tomorrow guys we will be having a test from uh ayub khan so you guys need to be prepared for that i'll be sending the test document on google classroom exactly at 2 pm so be prepared for that as well okay theek hai ji we can end the meeting let me know if there's any question guys before we end the meeting All clear? I can send you the previous recordings, which you'll have to request for the specific topics. I mean, you can let me know in, on the WhatsApp group, or you can text me on WhatsApp privately. Let me know the topics that you need the recordings for. And according to the policy, I'm allowed to send you two recordings within a specific 24-hour period. All right. Uh, and once you watch those recordings you can request for more after that all right and all the recordings will be posted on the drive that is there on the google classroom portal so guys please be sure keep checking the google classroom portal the meeting will end any minute i'll see you guys tomorrow with the test all right allah hafiz